Let's go in and check this place out. This is at the Willow Run uh, Airport, and they made uh, bombers during World War II. Well, I believe this is the biggest radial engine they made during the war. R4360, four rows of cylinders. Let me get this light out. There we go. There's a World War I fighter, WW1, called a SPAD-13. Well, it sure sits high on the nose gear. F4 Phantom. Hi there. Cobra? Gunship? Let's check it out. Yep. A Bell AH-1J Sea Cobra.
Hey, Jerry. Well, this guy was a mechanic. Let's find out a little bit more about him. It's at Fort Rucker, Alabama, Advanced Maintenance School. Attended primary helicopter train Fort Walters, Texas. Attended advanced helicopter training at Fort Rucker, Alabama. Joined the 11th Air Assault Division at Fort Benning, which became the 1st Air Cavalry Division. Oh, they have a Tuskegee Airman exhibit too, like the Tulsa Air Museum. Interesting his history of these Tuskegee Airmen. They were requested many times to fly escort because they were so good. Oh wow, they have a, I see a KC-135 Strato Tanker Simulator. Awesome. couple of early model simulators here. Oh, they have simulators here too. Where you could take off from a carrier. I might have to try that later. Oh man, they must have retrieved this out of the water. Douglas SBD Dauntless.
So here, let's see, the aircraft met its ultimate fate crashing upon takeoff and making a deep landing in Lake Michigan. Interesting. Crash upon takeoff from the deck of the Wolverine, crash landing into the waters of Lake Michigan. Engine lost power as the plane launched down the runway, settled in the lake. Pilot was able to escape. Aircraft entered the water upside down, settled at the bottom of Lake Michigan in the position you see before you. The aircraft was found in the early 1990s by A&T Recovery and was brought up to the surface in 1996 after spending nearly five decades underwater. Okay, this uh, there must be a helicopter here. Or Harrier. Evolution of US naval aircraft carriers. Look at that, 1922 was the first one. First one was 15.5 knots, which equates to 17.8 miles per hour. USS Midway, that's a museum there in uh, San Diego. Now they could go 30 plus knots. And let's see, the first one was 542 feet in length, and the last one was 1,106 foot feet. The sea's pretty good size, good swells, I think the deck all the way up to 30 plus feet. That was always the interesting thing I thought is right here, the aircraft lands with full power. So if the hook doesn't catch the wires, then it has to you know, take off again. Landing and taking off on a carrier. So a friend of mine, uh, Terry, was uh, assigned to KC-135. Terry, does this look familiar?
These are cool looking helicopters. Interesting two side sticks, I believe. Instead of one in the center between the pilot. Oh, now this one, okay. That must be the operator for the uh, ammunition. This is a center stick here for the pilot. Look at the blades on that thing, oh my gosh. Jet engine there. Well, I see two exhausts on this Cobra, so there's t there must be two engines. Looks like they have another project here to restore. F-18 Hornet. It's what you saw on the new two Top Gun movie. I know a James Cox. He wasn't in the Navy though. So here's a Cessna 337, but let's see what the military uh, model is. Let's see. O2 Skymaster, okay, it's the same thing. Well, no, it's O2 on the uh, Cessna. It's still called the Skymaster, but 337. Big old flap and a big aileron. It kind of looks like an O200, but it's called a A50.
V770 Ranger engine. There you go. There's a monster. Allison V1710 engine. Wow, look at that thing. Shaft for the propeller. Over 70,000 of these engines were produced from 1931 to 1948. So used in the P-38 Lightning. Was also produced for the fighters P-39 Air, Air Cobra and P-40 Warhawk, P-51 Mustang and P-63 King Cobra. So we have one of these at the museum, R2800 Double Wasp. When I say at the museum, I'm talking about the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. The 2800 was used to power fighters and medium bombers during World War II. F4U Corsair, which exceeded 400 miles per hour in 1940. Twin row radial. So here we have a pulley. Showing examples here. Pull forward, push forward, and it's moving that flight control right there. Let's see what these other ones do. Five simple machines in aviation: the incline plane. Okay. Moving a lever. See this one here. I guess they're all together here. It's pretty neat for the kids. Yeah, the unique thing about this uh, O2 Skymaster is it has a front engine and a rear engine. And uh, you don't need a multi-engine rating to fly these because the engines are center in line. Here's the lever. Example with your rudder pedals. Showing the vertical stabilizer on the tail. Moving the rudder. And the last one is the wheel and axle.
Yeah, there's a lot of similarities here between some of these. Oh, there is one more here, the screw. That's an interesting museum. Probably about, I think we're a little bit bigger. And we have some space stuff. And also, uh, we have a planetarium. Looks like some air conditioning guys here installing some new ductwork. So we have an F-14 at ours, and this museum has the F-18. How you doing? Doing great, how are you? Not bad. Did you come in through the gift shop? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, I paid my dues. No, I wasn't so worried about that, but <laughs> the, the woman in the gift shop, we're just trying to keep tabs on who's here. Oh, okay. And with the two end doors open because the guys are working here. Yeah, I saw all the heat and air trucks sure out there. That if you had, that you came through the proper channels. Yeah. And, or I would have directed you back there, but she's like, well, I don't, there's been so many people. It's like, we have like 10 visitors today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get too confused here. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Yeah, nice Enjoy. place. I volunteered at the Tulsa Air and Space Museum. Oh, okay. And, uh, well, we're probably almost the same size, maybe a little bit bigger. We're small, and we yeah. know it. But, you know, there's uh, up in, uh, I'm not sure if it's Wisconsin or Minnesota, but it's the Richard T. Bong Museum, uh -huh. and he was the guy who invented the, the bouncing bomb. Oh. The one they would drop out of a bomber, and it would, like, it was for dam busting. Oh, okay, so yeah. Bounce, and, like a barrel, it would bounce on the water, hit yeah. the, the wall, and blow up. Yeah. And um, a very small museum, but he has a P-38 Lockheed Lightning. Oh, yeah. And a whole bunch of other little vignettes of World War II, and it's very cool. It's like, you yes. know, it's, it's a donate, you know, it's run by volunteers. You go in, you give them a donation, and, um, yeah, well, they probably have admission, but it's like a donation to the museum. And um, it's, if you're right there and you have nothing else you're doing, which I yeah. was coming back through to go home in Michigan, I said, of course, I'm going to stop there. Yeah, we get a lot of state people coming through, you know, yeah. stopping. So it's, yeah, I, I love these little museums. Are, you said, are you from Tulsa? Yeah. I see our B-17 has been there a few times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. The Yankee lady. I probably was. I've only been there since March volunteering. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah. Oh, good work you do. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, we, there, you know. Do you guys get a lot of school kids through here? Well, you we don't mind if I put the camera on you if you uh, speak about your museum, do you? It, Actually, the person I'd rather you do that with is okay. Kurt, because oh, he's okay. a docent. I'm just security. Oh, okay, I got you. We do I have a you. program specifically, yeah. like if you were filming that whole time, it's yeah. like if you can edit me out or take 20 pounds. F-84 Thunder Streak. That's a cool airplane. Nice paint job. This being under construction messed us up. We used to be all World War II along this back aisle here. Okay. And uh, so we got some, like any other nonprofit, we got a donation for this Rosie the Riveter exhibit. Oh, cool. So it's a, it's a walk through, it's a little corridor. What's trapped inside there is two thirds of a B 24 fuselage. Oh, wow. One third of that was built here. There's a flight deck from a B 24 built here, and there's also a top turret uh, from a British built. Our Canadian built Lancaster. Okay. That's back there. So that's kind of captured part of the exhibit. Uh, we can't, we can't, we, I, I can show you if you want to see it. We'll go back there. Uh, but it's not typically open. Okay, cool. That's what's going on back there. I'd rather not talk about this little thing here, but if yeah. You want, if you want me, I can. <laughs> do, do, do you want? Okay. Oh, whatever you feel like. Yeah, right? well, this is kind of, it got pushed in here four months ago. 
It's an airplane. Mm -hmm. It's an A4, like that. Oh, over okay. There, Skyhawk That's why I was trying to figure in, out, though. So it's the Blue same Angels as that colors. one right there. Okay. Blue Angels colors. Okay. And it's going. It's a donation coming from Texas, going to a Catholic school, STEM building that they're building. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been sitting here four months. They haven't even broke the ground for the building yet. So I don't know how long it's going to be sitting here on this trailer. Okay. It kind of takes up a bit of space. But it's not a big deal because that's still closed over there. But it's going to be a big deal. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. And there's a company that all they do is shrink wrap, it looks like. Yeah, Texas Mobile Shrink Texas, Wrap. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, same with your boats. You know, a boat shrink wrapping, right? Yes. We, they do a lot of here in Michigan. We put our boats away. We shrink wrap it. So that pretty much you know, seals it up. So maybe, yeah, you said something about talking about Willow Run? Yeah, right okay. here. The stuff right here. Okay. So that, that's what our history is about. What's what's left of the factory is something that we bought in 2010. This factory was built in 1941 for the strictly to build the B-24 bomber. Okay. Uh, by Ford Motor Company. That's when they... See, they, they built the B-24 also in Tulsa. Correct. Yes. Uh, yeah, and there's, there's a tie-in from here, by the way. So oh, there is. There's a great okay. tie-in. Oh, awesome. From, from Tulsa. Um, so, Tulsa was a uh, uh, Douglas factory. Mm-hmm. And so out of the number of planes, what happened here is they got to the magic number, and that picture shows you the one plane an hour. One every 63 minutes is what Ford said. This number I stick with. Oh, wow. And the production got, they never built that many in Tulsa. I guarantee it. Not this. Not one every 63 minutes. That's what Ford made it like a car on assembly line. Everybody else was still building their planes like a plane manufacturer. Hmm. Stations. Oh, wow. Not a moving chain. So this stations. was a production line. And they proved it could be done. No one has done it since. And have to do it. We didn't need the numbers of the planes like we did in World War II. So backing up, they, they were able to build three sections of the fuselage a lot faster than whole airplanes. Front, middle, rear section, and the mid-wing. So Ford, on their own accord, developed had a 75-foot long trailer, a cab with two V8s and a sleeper, and it took two 75-foot long trailers to ship what they call knockdown KDs or parts planes down to Tulsa oh, wow. or Fort Worth for building down there. Oh, cool. So 2,000 planes left here on a four-day non-stop full military escort drive all the way down to Tulsa to drop those parts planes off for assembly down there. Wow. How many did you say? 2,000. 2,000? Close to 2,000 between the two factories. Oh, my gosh. And so the number we throw around here is 6,700 proper airplanes came off the factory here, mm -hmm. plus the 2,000, so 8,700 roughly. Yeah. Uh, out of the 18,600, so 40% came from one factory. Wow. That helped those places down there in, in Tulsa and and uh, Fort Worth get started with parts. I see. But those early parts were kind of sketchy because Ford, the people they had up here to build this airplane were farmers' daughters and guys who weren't mechanical and they had to teach them how to do all the assembly and the riveting and the manufacturing. Yes. They were confident in their training. Once they got everybody trained, they could build a plane, a good one. But those first few that went down to Tulsa were crappy. I mean, rivets oh, yeah. were falling out. <laughs> They were bitching. You sent us a bunch of junk down here. Oh, yeah. Well, they were still working through the process. Sure. If somebody got trained out here, people come in, guy comes in, yeah, my dad worked at the factory for one month. He's got his employment card. I go, what happened? They called him into the armed, serve, armed forces. Yeah. I go, Gee, uh, Ford didn't like your dad because they trained him and then he got pulled out. <laughs> so yeah, those are the guys. Once the turnover stopped, they got everybody in place, they got him trained, they started building a plane. And that's kind of how it looked. But that's the numbers here. We've always tried to get a B-24 back to the museum. Yeah. When in flying condition, that was the original scope of the founding fathers in 81 when the museum was formed. Yes. But uh, there's only four in the world that are intact, two in the world that are flying. Uh, no, four Willow Run planes intact. The two in the world that are flying are both consolidated. Oh, wow. San Diego. I see. Manufactured. So no, uh, no heritage. So you'd love to get one, but it's hard to get, yeah. get a hold and then, of one. Yeah, and like I said, we got that bomber plant over there. We saved 144,000 square feet of the uh, one mile long factory mm -hmm. from World War II. And it hopes of making that our future museum, but we're at, we just don't have enough money. Yeah. So we had to build a new hangar. I don't know if you came in from the south. Did you see the B-52 sitting in the field? Yeah, I saw that. Okay, that building behind there is our new hangar. Oh, We okay. had to build that. Oh, wow. Because we're in a hangar across the airport that was built in 1941. Yeah. The airport authority around here going, 
it's too old, everybody out. Yeah. We're not going to steam heat that anymore. We're worried about the structural. And so we're paying rent. Now we have our own building. Oh, I see. And so we're so what about this facility? This is our museum. Okay. That's our hangar. Oh, okay. For our flyables. Oh, did I see. see. Did you come? Did you see our, our chart up front with our fly, flyable aircraft? Uh, a B-17, B-25, a C-47. Yeah, I saw the C-47. Yeah. So we had five aircraft we saw rides on. Oh, wow. Okay, 40, UE too. That's 40% of oh, our income. Oh, awesome. Selling rides. Okay. And think about, I mean, B-25, B-17, C-47. That yeah. tri-motor is 1928. Yeah. So we've got some vintage stuff that, and the Huey ride is just over the top. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you a, don't see that very that's often. That's a great ride. Yeah. So. Do you take those airplanes around the country? We or? do. Well, okay. well, pretty much the Midwest. Okay. We're, we've got a swing on our B-17 going down to Texas. Okay. We're swinging around back to Kentucky and Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky and Tennessee. Oh, okay. On the way back up, we'll stop. If we can stop, go somewhere and sell two rides in the B-17, I guess it's worth our while, I understand. Oh, really? We just two enough, rides? Make enough to justify going to a site. Oh, wow. And selling rides. Yeah. Uh, the Huey, we can go anywhere and sell a ride. Yeah. We sell them right out of the field out here and on the weekends when, when, we're not, when we're available. The C-47, we use that a lot for member trips. If you're a museum member, yeah. I went to Oshkosh in 2019 in that C-47. Oh, that's too cool. Old. I'm telling you what. <laughs> You get out of C I didn't come in no car. I came in a C forty seven. Was that when they flew uh, uh, several of them in formation there? Mm, no, we we just we use that as an escort. So escort, okay. they may have flown them in formation because they, they do that. You know, they have all their different setups every year. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so very interesting. We'll do a trip to Toronto, members or, or Northern Michigan, our UP or Traverse City. Yeah, we've done rides like that. So it's a it's a cool place, okay. cool thing for. Well, we sell regular rides on that too. I mean, yeah. it's kind of anticlimactic, you know, with a transport plane, but the two hours I was in it on there and two hours back, I'm good. Box check, four hours. Yeah. It was a nice, smooth day. <laughs> it's, it's still fun. Yeah. It's, we have a UE, but of course, it's not flyable. But, uh, yeah, it's a four year Vietnam vet. Uh, so, four years of combat. It's but, a combat vet, which is pretty cool. I just saw one of the guys that I worked with, uh, he was on a UE in the service, and he just flew on one. He showed it on Facebook. I don't know where that was at, though. Well, there's a Sky Soldiers group out of it. There's, they're out of Atlanta, but they also have a base in St. Louis. Okay. And they have got a couple of Hueys and some Cobras that sell rides. In oh, two. wow. I'm looking at a Cobra ride. I've been trying to get one the last couple of years. I can't ever make ends meet and get to where they're selling rides. Yeah. Uh, I was down, I'll have to ask him I was down in Atlanta in May, and I tried to get something going down there. But um, I missed out on that. They weren't flying that weekend. Well, great. Yeah, I just wanted a little bit of yeah, information that's about your... That's what your, our history your, is about the World War Factory. Yeah. And the B-24 production, that kind of was got us. That's why there's an airport here. Uh-huh. Um, so that factory... So this airport was built for yes, the bomber yes, plant. Yes, okay. yes, exclusively. And and Ford was the uh, uh, manufacturer, the manufacturer of, of course, the government owned everything, and the government paid for everything. Okay. Ford did not own the building. I see. Uh, at the end of World War II, uh, the government sold that building to the University of Michigan for a dollar. Oh, wow. Anyway. They did a lot of defense stuff here. A little, yeah. little, little known fact that Michigan, until the mid-60s, and the students got all upset about them spending time on developing weapons, they did a lot of that post-World War II right here on the site. Mm -hmm. Radar systems. Um, guy came in. He says, i was an engineer here on uh, airplane uh, avoidance systems. Oh, in the wow. 50s, working on that stuff here. Oh, the Bullmark missile. You ever heard of the Bullmark missile? The guidance system was developed. I have not heard of that. Yeah, so it's something that we had uh, in the mid-50s for uh, high altitude, uh, just go up and blow up near the Russian bomber somewhere oh, close yeah. with some nuclear bomb. <laughs> so yeah, so a lot of stuff happened here. Uh, General Motors Corporation got the building in 1953. Well, Kaiser Frazier Automotive, have you ever heard of Kaiser Frazier? Yes. They built, from 50 to 53, they built their entire automotive industry was in that factory. Oh, wow. So how many square footage is that building? Uh, do you know? You're getting 144,000. You know, I don't, I don't, I never got the number. It's huge. It was a mile from one end to the other. Oh, okay. When wow. GM got it in '53, they started building automatic transmissions. Became yeah. Hydromatic Division of General Motors Automatic mm -hmm. Transmissions. From '53 to 2010, they built transmissions in there. Oh, okay. And then when uh, GM got out. We got a piece of the action. So you're taking 144,000. What's the rest of it now? A Did, lot. It was a lot a different mile things. From one end to the other. So I. So I different think, companies. I think, uh, no, no, no. Okay. It's gone. 
Oh, it's, oh, it's been demolished. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so you yeah, you just saved a hundred forty. We had the end piece where they would roll. You know, I think I remember <laughs> when you guys were door, running a the bomber plant. Maybe yeah, yes. I do remember that. that. So you were trying to save the whole plant. Well, no, we all, we knew we were going to save a portion of. It. Oh, just a portion. So of the part that. we got was, I mean, humongous. Yeah, that's but the great. The cool part about the part we got the two hangar doors where they come up yeah. on a runway for the first time they still open and close. Oh, awesome! And they're just these huge things. Yeah. So they'll still work. Awesome. Uh, but like I said, we're kind of, we just found out five And all ago. your flyables will be over there. No, they're going to oh, be over at the new hangar. Oh, the new hangar. Yeah, okay. So, so the bomber plant. Oh, this is on. moving over to the museum. No, no. Oh, okay. I got We want to up. do that. Okay. <laughs> That's basically, it's a holding building now. Yeah. The oh, I see. The future for that is basically a big question mark. Yeah. We've got some bigger aircraft in there. We've got a, um, a PB4Y slash two privateer, if you know what the B24 based there's a model over PBY, here. PBY, that's the, the flying there, boat, right? No, uh, PBY, PBY was. PBY, that was the designation for the flying boat. PB4Y slash 1 was a B-24 they used for maritime reconnaissance. The slash 2 was a modified B-24 they used for flying over the water. Oh, okay. Uh, not 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 a seaplane. I see. We've got one of those over there. We've got a, if you know what, a um, EC-121 Constellation radar oh, domes yeah, yeah. in Vietnam. They have one of those up in Kansas City. We've got one of those parked in there. Okay. Well, we've it's a it's a passenger version, you know, Constellation. 100 Super Sabres over there. Oh, cool. We've got a P2V Neptune mm -hmm. fire tanker from Montana, retired fire tanker. Oh, man. They donated the museum. They parked it over there. Yeah. Um, what else is in there? Uh, a, a 340 Convair. Oh, my gosh. sitting in there. You guys have a a lot of stuff um, over there. Um those are never not, not gonna fly. The the um P two V Neptune came in there, it's like got retired, it flew in here and we decommissioned it, so it was t limited out. Government mm -hmm. made them put those to sleep because they were all powered out. Okay. So they donated five or six. It's still in the fire tinker colors, we're gonna leave it like that. Hmm. But where we're gonna put it, I don't know. <laughs> so as far as well, it sounds state, like a good future here. Fifty two down the street, which is a six hundred mission Vietnam vet. Oh wow! Uh, we'll go restoration. We've had it since '83. Yeah, we were the first non-military museum to get a '52. Oh wow! They flew it in here in October of '83. It sat in the field over here. We moved it over there two years ago yeah. to be our gate guard for our new hangar. And, Could you uh, get up close to that, or is yeah, it fenced you park, around? You can park in the parking lot and walk up to it. Yeah, okay, feel free to do that. Yeah, I'd like to um, check that out. So the restoration is going on. Two of our guys that are working on the restoration. Crew chief on that plane in Vietnam. Oh, perfect! That's their baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Help keep you flying in Vietnam. So, pretty cool mm -hmm. story. I'm sure they feel good that the airplane's oh, yeah. still flying. Oh, they, well, you know, no, no, still, well, still. In I one mean, piece. the P fifty two is not yeah, that one, but still I mean, in one piece. Yeah. That was it's so funny. Uh, that was part of the salt treaty we signed with the Russians. They knew where that plane was. If we had moved it. It's off the treaty now, but if we had moved it back in the eight, 90s, we would have had to tell the Russians we're moving. Oh, is that right? Yeah, because, <laughs> hey, what about that bomber you put in? Uh, well, you can always test them to see if their satellite they, remember systems they, they would go out, out in Arizona and chop them up, right? Put a anvil right through the main wing section. The plane's done forever. Yeah. And we had to... They're in Tucson at the Pima... Yeah, exactly, the, yeah, the AMARG. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's the Boneyard. Davis, the boneyard. Montan. Uh, yeah, Davis, Montan Air, Air Force Base at yeah. the Boneyard. That's what well, this it. has been very interesting. I sure appreciate you, you talking with well, come me. Come on. You probably don't know about the deep landings. Yeah. That is a side paddle wheel Great Lakes luxury steamship. Oh, man, that, that they, they trained. Took the, they took the decks off, and they put two carrier decks on these to train the guys in Lake Michigan. Oh, my goodness. Where are you going to train? Naval aviators. Pacific? No, Atlantic, no. Yeah. Gulf of Mexico, no. The Germans had U boats over there too. Yeah. You couldn't put a big carrier out. Somebody says, take these steamships, we'll put a deck on them. They're going to be lower to the water, not as wide, not as long. And if you can land on those, then you're good. Because the fleet <laughs> carriers are bigger, but now there's, and there's no planes in the way on these other tra right, planes. So, Lake Michigan, why Lake Michigan? There was a treaty we signed with the Canadians and the Brits in War of 1812 that we didn't yeah. have any warships on common lakes. Hmm. Lake Michigan surrounded by the United States, so there was no so treaty violation. I see. At that point. So, we were in the clear then. Yeah, if you come over here. That's what they look like. 
You can always tell by the steam, the black smoke trail. Oh, yeah. Right. USS okay. Sable, USS oh, Wolverine. Oh, you want to go barrel roll? That sounds like fun. They Just those two. two. Those two. Okay. That's all they needed. Naval Air Force trained 17,000 naval aviators. Oh, I mean, remember how the Pacific the Theater was all naval oh, aviation, yeah. right? Oh, I mean, other than the island Dude, ground stuff, that. crazy stuff there. But oh, oh, 17,000 oh, oh, naval aviators. Good. And off these carriers. It was genius. Stroke wow, of genius. That was a good idea. So they had to land, stop, put yeah, brakes, no I tail hooks. Okay, they stopped, they backed up, and they took off. Man. And I think the so the steamship, here. what was it used before? It was a train? luxury Great Lakes cruiser. Oh, luxury. Okay, for just taking yeah, cruises. Sure, cruises. It I mean, sure doesn't luxury. look that way. <laughs> no, well, I took the deck down. The paddle wheel still on the side. Paddle wheel still working right here. The paddle oh, wheel okay. turning in there. I see it now. On each side, yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm lined up for, I'm lined, I'm lined up on the carrier. Interesting. Then, let's see, where's my gear? I'm trying to, I think I've seen the number. Uh, I've got, I've got, I've seen eight, I've seen 16 take off and lands to be qualified. So I guess I'm not too sure. Well, that wasn't much training. Read the instructions. That's okay. And sorting. And sorry. Oh. I hit the red button. And click on click on red sorry. No, nope, right here. Oh. Click on that. That puts you back on the deck. Okay, now you're back in the start position. Oh. Click on the H. Yep. Okay. It's automatic takeoff. Yeah. I know it's hard. Yeah. Don't touch that stick for 500 feet. I know you want to. Oh yeah. <laughs> I know you want Salute to. Dude. 500 feet. Gear goes up. Uh, it's out of calibration. Yeah, I, I can calculate that for you. Try another one. Might have a better chance. It should take off straight, 500 feet, and then you grab the stick and you want to turn around and try to land. You put the hook down, you put the gear down, you put the five steps of flaps down and come in and land behind the carrier. Oh. And throttle it in. Yeah. So you take off, you grab the stick at 500 and make a turn, come around behind the carrier and do your approach. Okay. So, um, you're going to calibrate or try another Well, hop, at, hop on that one over there. You might have to do it off. I don't know. Some and kids were here. I was telling the kids were here. The games are whack. Yeah, those joysticks get abused. I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, we've broken six joysticks in the last four months. <laughs> really? It's hard to break them. Yeah, don't. I know you want to touch that stick, and that's the most important. Let it take off for you. It's the easy part. You're, the hard part is getting that back on the deck. Throttle. Just use that throttle. Do I have to hit the throttle? Yeah, full throttle. And then that's all you have to do. All right. Should take off automatically. Flaps, extend yep. flaps, tail hook. Oh, I'll need that for yep. landing. You got to put that down. You'll hear everything go up here. You'll hear the gear go up. You hear the gear retract. Okay. There, there. That's everything tucking away. Okay. Gear. It's got to get up to 500 feet. Yep. You're gonna make a circle around, come behind a carrier. Work your yeah. Work your throttle. Throw your throttle. Slow your throttle down just a little bit. Get a little more control that way. Go back a ways and then make your sweep in. You know, need a little more around. altitude. <laughs> well, you, you, you gotta fly it. There's no autopilot. I don't see it going up much. I, I'm giving it everything I can get to get up. Landing gear down. Well, maybe the landing gear should. Uh -oh. oh, hello. No. That isn't good. Yeah. Yeah, too late. Okay. Same thing. Hit the red button. Oh, here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you got back in the deck. That's okay. Okay. You should be able to take off. And yeah. there we go. Okay. What aircraft is that simulating? This is simulating the craft that planes it. Have you guys got around the oh, corner the yet? I bet you guys haven't got around the corner yet and saw the crashed airplane. No. Oh, well, you're <laughs> flying what's around the corner. I won't oh, say anymore. Okay. I'll, I'll let you be a surprise to you. Okay. <laughs> you're flying what's around the corner. I've seen a few of my day. So, out of the 17,000 Navy aviators, only nine guys died. It's wow, that's a hobby. great record. And this is the, this is the uh, uh, salvage. Everybody took that mission. job seriously. They must have. Uh, uh, they're, they're, out of the 130 planes that hit the bottom of the lake, mechanical issues, some were pilot errors. Mm -hmm. Most were mechanical. This one was a mechanical issue. This was actually flying in combat in 1942 in North Africa. 
19, back in 1943, October 5th, 43, going down the deck, the engine stopped. Right off the edge of the deck, uh, it ran the guy over. That's a crease in the fuselage. I don't know why And uh, he was okay. He's flying. Still flying. Right back in the saddle again. The plane didn't fare too well. Went to the bottom of Lake Michigan. The guy in his own accord, 1994, started deciding, I'm going to salvage these aircraft. Oh, man. If you look at the screen over there on the right-hand side, you see some of the robots. So robots with cameras and straps. Wrap straps around these airplanes. Hook airbags to these straps, fill the bags there, and float the thing to the surface. It wasn't really super high tech. About how deep was this uh, plane? Uh, these are 300 to 500 feet down in Lake Michigan. They're all in the same, pretty much the same area. Uh, they train in the same area off of Navy Pier in Chicago. <clears throat> they flew out of Glen Glenview Naval Air Station, which is not there anymore, it was north of Chicago. Go out and get their carrier landing, take off, and Hopefully get them in. I don't think they got them all in in one day, as far as air training. But uh, so, how many did you say they recovered? He's pulled up over thirty. Over thirty. And the Navy. And one hundred and thirty were crashing in the water. Yeah, there's still a lot down there. The Navy's benefited the most because they, they, they up until last year, anything you picked up anywhere was a Navy property. They decided last year, well, we got too much stuff, so. If you're going to show an interest in restoring it, we'll let you have it. Oh, wow. So, uh, in 94, it all had to go through Pensacola Navy Air Museum for processing. I see. This was his first salvage in 94. It sat down there from 94 to 2017 when we got it. We're the first and only museum that we know of to display it as, as crashed. Mm -hmm. uh, Kalamazoo Air Zoo, two hours up the road here in 94. Great museum if you got time. Mm -hmm. Just up on 94, two hours up uh, west of here. We've got a really nice museum. They've got an F-4 Wildcat that they're restoring. In the bottom of the lake. Oh, wow. A uh, guy in Virginia Beach from the Military Aviation Museum, Virginia Beach, great collection, mm -hmm. blind collection. He's got uh, in New Zealand right now, a Dauntless from the bottom of the lake, he's having restored to flying condition. Man, so, that's I mean, a big undertaking. Oh, yeah. There wasn't much left of this. I like that you guys did it. You know, kept cool. it like yeah, that. Yeah, we're happy with that. A lot of, lot of oohs and ahs. The guy who did the salvage operation came in, we opened this up in November 2019, he came in, gave a historical talk about this, and he was very happy mm -hmm. to see that the way it was displayed, obviously he saw yeah. it at the lake for the first time, and that's how it was. So the Hero Midway, sunk the four Japanese carriers at Midway, the SPD Nautilus, 1938 design, and uh, kicked the Japanese butts. Yes. Pretty cool. <laughs> So you worked at General Motors, you said? Yeah, I was an electrician. For oh, electrician? Years. Yeah. What got you interested in aviation? I mean, are as you a, a pilot or just nope, as a kid, aviation enthusiast? Building the models. Uh, it's between space and airplanes. That was always my big thing. Yes. Um, so I retired for GM, GM for a year and came down for one of the historical talks at the museum. Yeah. I said, wow, you know, pretty cool. And I saw they were looking for volunteers and Dobson, great. That's I, neat. I do it twice a week. Only There's only one other guy that does twice a week around here. I've been doing that for five years, twice a yeah, week. Yeah, so. that's great. I love doing it. I love telling the stories. I meet a lot of cool people. Yeah, heard a lot of cool stories from veterans. Oh, yeah. Which is really cool. Not so many World War II guys anymore, but I've got my share of World War II guys, but you get the yeah. Vietnam stories, which are pretty cool. Yes. But, uh, or, or stories from relatives. Uh -huh. You know, kind of. And a lot of those I use on my talk. If I, oh, that's, really, that's really juicy. I said, I'll use that. So electrician at General Motors, for a plant electrician? Yeah, well, okay. actually, yeah. Like well, facilities, my, maintenance well, type of thing? Yeah. Well, actually, I did a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, I started out here at the hydromatic transmission plant. Oh, okay. I apprenticed there, uh, got laid off. I spent 17 years at the world headquarters downtown Detroit as an electrician. Of course, oh, there was wow. more facilities, yeah. right? Uh, it was the building, taking care of the old GM building. I met yeah. my wife. I was 25 years old. I'm single. I'm working at the world headquarters. <laughs> Lots of oh, women. Oh, <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? That was fun. And then uh, when they moved to the Renaissance Center downtown Detroit, moved the whole operation, um, I went to the Pole Town Assembly, and I helped launch a Chevy Bolt and oh, wow. a Cadillac CT6. Yeah. I only built that for a few years, all aluminum. I worked in a body shop on robots. After 17 years on robots, finishing Oh, up, neat. Which was pretty cool. So I got to so do a quite lot of a variety, things. yeah. Between the commercial end of it and back to the industrial and finishing up with robots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to do the Henry Ford uh, Museum uh, Saturday. Oh, you'll, oh, you'll, Is that you'll, good? Oh, yeah. 
Is it good? <laughs> oh, man. You'll love it. And then the, is it pronounced Rouge Plant? The Rouge Factory Tour. Rouge Factory Tour, That's part yeah. Of your, yeah, do and that. And then Greenwood Village. Uh, Greenfield uh, Village. Greenfield is, Village, is, yeah. is the outside part. Okay. I mean, yeah, so he's brought farms. He brought Edison's workshop from New Jersey. Oh, That's man. on the site. Wow. I mean, you can see Edison sat in the chair. I mean, it's really cool. Uh, I'm Wright looking Brothers, forward to it. The Wright Brothers office in Dayton, Ohio is on the site. Wow. He just got so much old. So Henry Ford was a big collector okay. back in the day. He's, he got really weird. Oh, he did? Know, toward World War II. Yeah, he wasn't for supporting President Roosevelt. Oh, yeah. He did not want to contribute to the war whatsoever. He didn't want to help the Brits either. Oh, interesting. It was Edsel Ford, his son, that made everything happen. Henry yeah. Ford, nothing to do with it. Wow. Story, the, you know, no, the Rolls-Royce Merlin. Right, yeah. Famous Rolls-Royce Merlin. Yes. Well, 1940, 19, late 39, 1940, 1440, an armored car shows up to the Bruges factory in Dearborn with the plans for the Rolls-Royce Merlin. Edsel told the government, we'll build that engine for you. We'll build them for the Brits. Yeah. Plans show up, Henry Ford says, get that shit out of here. Oh, yeah. We're not building nothing for the Brits. <laughs> and Edsel got egg on his face. He told the government, yeah. Henry Ford says, no, get it out of here. They went down the street to Packard Motor Company in Detroit, and Packard licensed blew all the Rolls-Royce Merlins and got all oh, the glory man. for that. So Interesting. Packard built Rolls, I mean, that's right there with the Rolls, Packard built Rolls-Royce. Ford yeah. could have got that thing. Although Ford made good, they built um, 57,000 R2800 Pratt Whitney's okay. at the Rouge factory. Wow. 57,000. Oh, said, man, 7, that's 000. really putting them so, out. Uh, Edsel made up in the back end on those engines. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so he could have had the Rolls Royce. Well, I'm glad I, I stopped by here and, you know, lots of good museums around this area. Where you, where you, what, what's the rest of the day for you? Uh, the rest of the day, we, we're setting up camp over here. Was at, that your uh, trailer? Yeah, that's okay, ours. We're trying to figure out whose trailer that Yeah, was. we're uh, going to go over here to Wayne County Fairgrounds. Okay, yep. So, right over here. Yeah. Belleville, yep. Oh, is it over this yeah, way? So, okay. it's, yeah, this way, yeah. Yeah. So, you can go uh, to the 52 if you want to walk around out there in the field. Yeah, I'd like to do that. That's fine. Okay, um, well, Kurt, thank you so hey, much. Thanks for coming in. You bet. Glad I gave you something. Good talking with you. Thanks for all the information there. Yeah, you're welcome.